Good morning everyone. So this meeting we will have another topic under module 2 which is lesson number 2, Piaget stages of cognitive development. So before anything else, still we will be guided with the following learning outcomes. So at the end of this module, as students, you should be able to first describe Piaget stages in your own words. Then conduct a simple Piagetian test interview with children. And lastly, is to match learning activities to the learner's cognitive stage. So in this lesson class, we will learn and discuss about the different stages of cognitive development by Jan Piaget and also the different basic cognitive concepts according to Jan Piaget. So Jan Piaget's class, Cognitive Theory of Development, is truly a classic in the field of educational psychology. So when we say psychology class, it includes um, different subfields and it refers to the scientific study of the mind and behavior. And again, it includes different subfields of study such as areas as human development, of course, and also sports health, clinical, social behavior, and cognitive processes. So that's why his theory is called stages of cognitive development But because at the first place, John Piaget is a psychologist. So this theory fueled other researches and theories of development and learning. So its focus is on how individuals construct knowledge. So, who is John William Fritz Piaget? So, John Piaget class was born on August 9, 1896 in Neuchâtel, Switzerland. And he died on September 16, 1980 at Geneva, Switzerland at the age of 84. And he studied at the University of Neuchâtel, University of Zurich. And... His fields are developmental psychology. So um, a while ago, I already um, discussed and defined what is psychology and, of course, the field of epistemology. So when you say epistemology class, it refers to the theory of knowledge, especially with regard to arts, methods, validity, and scope. And it is also a philosophical study of the nature, origin, limits of human knowledge. Okay, so the, for 60 years class, Jan Piaget conducted research on cognitive development. His research method involved observing a small number of individuals as they responded to cognitive tasks that he designed, which are called the Piagetian tasks. Piaget also called his general theoretical framework, which is genetic epistemology, because he was interested in how knowledge developed in human organisms. Then, Piaget was initially into biology, and he also had a background in philosophy. Knowledge from both these disciplines influenced his theories and research of child development, and out of his researches, Piaget came up with the stages of cognitive development. So for us to better understand some of the things that happen during cognitive development, it is very important for us first to examine a few of the important ideas and concepts or the basic cognitive concepts that are introduced by Piaget. So these are the some of the factors that influence how children learn and grow. So first thing, or the first cognitive concept that we will unlock and learn is what we call the schema. So schema class, according to Piaget, he used this term schema to refer to the cognitive structures of by which individuals intellectually adapt to and organize their environment. So it is an individual's way to understand or create meaning about a thing or experiences. Then when you see schema class, it is like the mind has a filing cabinet and each drawer has folders that contain files of things he or she has had an experience with. So for instance class, if a child sees a dog for the first time, he creates his own schema, which is the filing cabinet of what a dog is. 
So, the schema, for example, of a dog for a first time, nga nakakita og dog na child class is, it has four legs and a tail and also it barks and it's furry. So, the child then puts this description of a dog on file, which is called schema class in his mind. When he sees another similar dog, he pulls out that schema or the file or the schema of a dog in his mind, looks at the animal. After the schema class, we have another cognitive concept which is called assimilation. So when we say assimilation class, this is the process of fitting a new experience into an existing or previously created cognitive structure or schema. So let's Take, for example, our example a while ago, which is a child sees a dog. So if the child sees another dog, this time a little smaller one, because as we all know, class, um, not all dogs have um, the same sizes, diba? Right? We have the smaller ones and the bigger ones. So in this situation, the child would make sense of what he is seeing by adding this information on what schema he or she has created a while ago, which is a different looking dog into his schema of a dog. So meaning, when we say assimilation class, it is the process of pulling out the different schema that you have created from the previous experiences and you need to add what are the certain characteristics that you need to add in a certain animal, person, or thing. So that is what we call assimilation. Then the third cognitive concept class according to Jan Piaget is what we call accommodation. So when you say accommodation class, this is another process which creating a new schema. So, katotong assimilation class kaniya is, it is all about adding new information into your previous schema of a certain animal or thing. But the accommodation is creating a new schema. So, so for example, class, if the same child now sees another animal that looks like a little bit like a dog, which has four legs, tail, furry, so... He or she says to her or his mommy that, Look, mommy, what a funny looking dog. It bark is funny too. Then the mommy explains, That's not a funny looking dog, baby. That's a goat. So with mommy's further descriptions, the child will now create a new schema which is called accommodation class that of a Goat. So he now adds a new file in his filing cabinet. So when you say again, accommodation class, this is a process of creating a new schema. So unlike the assimilation, me fit ramang ka or mo add ramang ka new experience or information about the um, previous ni nga schema. But in accommodation class, you need to create a new schema. So in this example, aside from a schema of a dog, he, the child will now create a new schema of a goat. So that is the process what is called accommodation. Then the last thing class is the equilibration. So among the two processes which are assimilation, accommodation, equilibration is very important because according to Piaget class, he believed that the people have natural need to understand how the world works and to find order, structure, and predictability in their life. So that's why equilibration is achieving proper balance between assimilation and accommodation. So we say equilibration from the word equal. There should be a balance between the two processes which are the assimilation and accommodation. So for example, when our experiences do not match our schema or the schemata, plural of schema or cognitive structures, we experience cognitive disequilibrium, of course. So if we will not have a balance of the two processes, assimilation and accommodation, we will now be experiencing the opposite, of course, for equilibration, which is cognitive disequilibrium. So, this means, class, that there is a discrepancy between what is perceived and what is understood. So, that's why we need to exert effort 
through assimilation and accommodation to establish equilibrium once more. So, cognitive development involves a continuous effort class to adapt to the environment in terms of assimilation and accommodation. So, that's why class, if we are parents, um, caregivers, our roles as parents and caregivers is are very important because kita may mupa sabut sa atong mga babies or child class nga no that's not a dog anymore baby kundi it's another kind of animal which is a goat or another kind of animal so in this sense class Piaget's theory is similar in nature to other constructivist perspectives of learning like Brunner and Vygotsky. After the different um, basic cognitive concepts by Jan Piaget class, we will now discuss the different stages of cognitive development of Jan Piaget. So we have four stages of cognitive development. So the first stage class is the sensory motor stage. Then the second stage is pre-operational stage. The third one is the concrete operational stage. And the fourth and last stage is what we call the formal operational stage. So when we say sensory motor stage class as an overview, the child begins to interact with the environment. Then the pre-operational stage, the child begins to represent the world symbolically. Then, the third stage, it is all about when the child learns rules such as conservation. Then, the last stage, the adolescent can transcend the concrete situation and think about the future. So, let's start class with the first stage, which is called the sensory motor stage. So, the first stage class corresponds from birth to infancy. So, this is the stage when a child who is initially reflexive in grasping, sucking, and reaching becomes more organized in his in movement and activity. So the term sensory motor class focuses on the importance or prominence of the senses, of course, from the word sensory or the senses, and muscle movement for the motor through which the infant comes to learn about himself and the world. So in working with children in the sensory motor stage class, we should take note as future educators and as teachers that we should aim to provide a rich and stimulating environment with appropriate objects to play with. Because in this stage class, as what I've said a while ago, the child begins to interact with the environment. So it is very important for us teachers to provide a rich and stimulating environment. So when can we say that we have a rich and stimulating environment class? So we need to provide um, a very conducive learning environment wherein your your child can manipulate objects and of course please choose objects which are appropriate to your child wherein they will play with okay and under this um stage we have what we call the object permanence so do you think class um the babies can think without words so babies lack representational thought or ability to think through the use of symbols so of course we can say that of course not babies cannot think without words so that is why piaget says babies cannot think under sensory motor stage so evidence of representational thought emerges from the use of language and object permanence in this stage which is sensory motor stage so when we say object permanence class it is the fact that objects events or even people continue to exist when they are not in the infant's direct line of sensory or the senses or motor action okay so when we say object permanence class it is the ability of the child to know that an object still exists 
as what I've said a while ago, even when out of sight. So this is the ability attained in the sensory motor stage. So have you um, observed in this illustration class? Oh, nga ang daddy is um, holding a ball, then he tried to hide the ball. So the, the daddy sa said, where's the ball, baby? So... Um, the baby, oh, yung na ng baby dari. For the last time, Dad, I don't have object permanent. So, I don't know where the dumb ball is because I believe it ceased to exist when you turn Oh, ipakita niya ang ball. There's the ball. Then the baby will be happy when seeing the ball. So, that is object permanence class and the sensory motor stage as the first stage in Piaget's stages of cognitive development. So the next stage class under Piaget's stages of cognitive development is what we call the pre-operational stage or thought. So the pre-operational stage class covers from about 2 to 7 years old. Okay? Then when we say pre-operational thought class, it is characterized by intuitive thought meaning the logic basis only on experiences, then symbols in play, of course, then egocentrism, lack of conservation, and animation. So the first um, characteristic under the pre-operational stage class is the symbolic function. So we see symbolic function class, this is the ability to represent objects and events. A symbol is a thing that represents something else. A drawing, a written word, or a spoken word comes to be understood as representing a real object. Like for example, class, a real MRT train. So, the symbolic function gradually develops in the period between, again, 2 to 7 years. So, I have here different um, kids who are under the pre-operational stage that is 2 to 7 years old. So, like, for example... His name is Real. So a two-year-old Real may pretend to that she is drinking from a glass which is really empty. So in that situation class, Real um, pretended to drink a glass of water even if that glass do not have a water jod. So though she already pretends the presence of water, the glass remains to be a glass. So at around four years of age, however, class... Nico, the other child, may, after pretending to drink from an empty glass, turns the glass into a rocket ship or a telephone. So aside from real nga, now pretend siya drinking without a water inside a glass of water. So the si Nico class is, iya pong gisimbolize ang glass of glass into a rocket ship or a telephone. Nga like, hello? Or yeah, drink. Oh. Then by the age of six or seven, the child can pretend play with objects that exist only in his mind. So Enzo, who is six, can do a whole ninja turtle routine without any costume nor props. Then lastly, Trisha who is seven, can pretend to host an elaborate princess ball only in her mind. So, as we remain in class, our childhood memories, there are times na maka-remember you the class na we are pretending to be the host of any event, like beauty pageant, eh, maski wala tay mga um, contestants dira, oh, we really pretend to do that thing, then we um, even choose any object that represent the that event or any um thing so all those things are, are under the pre-operational stage which is the symbolic function because in symbolic function class symbolic play plays a vital role role in this one so use one object to stand for another fantasy play pretend to be something like what um niko did or um Enzo did in where he can do a whole ninja turtle routine without any costume or um, props like what we have in this illustration. And when we say make-believe play, use toys as props, also animism. Okay? 
Then, after the symbolic function class, another characteristic of under this stage is the egocentrism. So, when you say egocentrism class, child's inability to take in others' perspective. So, this is the tendency of the child to only see his point of view and assume that everyone also has his the same point of view. So, when we are child class, we pretend or we expected that we have the same point of view to others. So, like for example, class, um, a five-year-old boy who buys a toys a toy truck rather for his mother's birthday. So we expected that whatever we like, like the toy truck, if we are a child nga boy, so we expected nga whatever we want or like in our childhood. We expected that our parents, like the mother of us, also like that one. Because in egocentrism class, the child cannot take the perspective of others. Then another example class is a three-year-old girl who cannot understand why her cousins call her daddy or ang daddy, uncle, and not daddy. So um, basically class, most of our younger brothers and sisters um, expected that if his or her daddy, iyang tawag is daddy, so he expected that the other um, people will also call her his daddy as daddy put, same as what he have called her or his daddy. So I have your class the very um, appropriate example for the egocentrism, which is, which is called the three mountain test. So, here in that three mountain test class, little Timmy sees the big mountain and David, the doll, sees the smaller mountain. Because in egocentrism class, is if unsa ray point of view ni mo, di ba, maura mana. But in this three mountain test class, not dili makakita si um, Timmy kung unsa ang nakita ni. Davi, kailan lain mantag perspective. So this is Piaget's three mountains egocentrism test. Draw how the mountains would look from the doll's point of view. So Timmy's egocentrism prevents him from seeing Davi's perspective. So Timmy would draw the big mountain rather than the smaller mountains that on the side of the um dal Davi. So that is egocentrism then the next um under the pre-operational um stage class is what we call conservation so in conservation class um it the concept that certain basic properties of an object example volume mass and weight remain the same even if its physical appearance changes so here um when we say conservation class it refers to the tendency of the child to only focus on one aspect of a thing or event and exclude other aspects so for example class when a child is presented with two identical glasses with the same amount of water the child will say they have the same amount of water but however once water from one of the glasses is transferred to an obviously taller but narrower glass that child might say that there is more water in the taller glass. So they cannot identify class um, whether among the two glasses, the same raday ang amount, ang nalahi lang is that glass is mas daku siya, mas lapad siya, and mas mabu, and the other glass is taller and narrower. Then, The child only focused or centered only one aspect of the glass. That is a taller glass. So the child was not able to perceive that the new glass is also narrower. So the child only centered on the height of the glass. Oh, so that is, yarang gi include nga iyang tanawon is only the aspect, one aspect which is the height of the glass. And excluded the width in determining the amount of water in glass. So there are um, different aspects in a thing, event. Then, of course, if 
if we are a child under pre-operational, we cannot um, identify different aspects kundi we will only focus in only one aspect like for example the height of the class rather than um, we should also focus on the width so muna lang mailad na to class ang ato ang mga younger brothers and sisters if we divided the juice or the coke diba mo atong ilaron oh imong ibalhin sa mas taas pero mas niwang pero kung buto na unaon mas gamay to iyang amount of coke why para kay ang kana imo ang mga igsuon nga under sa 2 to 7 years old di pa man sila ka differentiate nga ay giilad ko nimo mas gamay man gud ni kay taas ni siya pero tanawa mas ni, mas Tani mas nipis man pud ang kuan o or mas slimmer man pud ang glass. So that is the conservation or centration under pre-operational um stage. So there is an example class oh the famous conservation test equal amounts of the water. So the first step in experiment is to show the child two cups with equal amount of water. Then the step 2 Pour one cup into a tall, skinny cup and the other into short, fat cup. So if we are the child under 2 to 7 years old, we can say that a glass which has more water is the glass in the first picture. Kaning taller but narrower or thinner. Okay, mas taas man siya, mas mulabaw man diba ang amount of water. So basically, if we are the child, look at this picture. We will really pinpoint the the taller nga ga glass rather than the smaller ones. Kaya mas taas man ang tubig glass. So that is what we called um conservation or centration under the pre-operational stage. Then another um under the pre-operational stage is what we called class irreversibility. So we see ir irreversibility class pre-operational children who are two to seven years old under this stage still have the inability to reverse their thinking. So, for example, class, they can understand that 2 plus 3 is 5. So, we all know that 2 to 7 years old, especially the 6 and 7 years old, they can now understand that 2 plus 3 equals 5. Kabalo sila anak class or kabalo ta anak pagkagamay na to. But, it's hard for us to understand that the reverse of 2 plus 3 equals 5, which is the sub subtraction, 5 minus 3 is 2, is the same. So that is irreversibility. Then another class after irreversibility is animism. So this is the tendency of children to attribute human-like traits or characteristics to inanimate objects. So we have here one of the figures of speech, the personification. So we can... um. Um, we can compare animism to same with perso personification as one of the figures of speech. So, for example, when not when at night, rather, the child is asked, "Oh, imo mga younger brother and sister, imo pangutan on. Where is the sun? Oh, nangutan ka during night. Dong, dai, where's the sun karun? So probably." Your younger brother and sister class will answer or reply you that Mr. Sun is asleep because um, they give also life to Mr. Sun that like the people, we also, we sleep man diba during night. So like Mr. Sun, since Mr. Sun is not around during the night time kay si Mr. Moon naman, so like the people, ni asleep ko or natulog si Mr. Sun. So, the child will give life to the Mr. Sun like us human beings. So, that is animism. Then, the last one class is what we call the transductive reasoning. So, when we say transductive reasoning class, this refers to the pre-operational child's type of reasoning that is neither inductive, which is from specific to general, then, nor deductive, which is the opposite for inductive, of course, you're going to start with the general statements or things too specific. So, reasoning appears to be from particular to particular, not from specific to general or the other is general to specific, but 
When we say transductive reasoning, particular to particular. So, example, if A causes B class, then of course, when we say particular to particular, B also causes A. So, for example, since her mommy comes home every day around 6 o'clock in the evening, when asked why it is already night, your younger brother or sister will say, because my mom is already home. So, ilang ma-associate class nga why they can say that it is already night because naanda naman nila class nga at 6 o'clock, muulit na inyuhang mama wherein gabi ina na siya. So, that is transductive reasoning. Third stage of PJ stages of the cognitive development class is what we call concrete operational stage. So we say concrete operational stage class. Logic is still tied closely to concrete. Concrete. So meaning real materials or objects, contexts, and situation. So this stage class is characterized by reversibility, decentering, conservation, and seriation. So first, we will discuss what is decentering. So we see decentering class, this refers to the ability of the child to perceive the different features of objects and situations. So no longer is the child focused or limited to one aspect or dimension which is opposite to centration in the previous stage under pre-operational stage. So in the centering class, um, this allows the child to be more logical when dealing with concrete objects and situations. Then the other characterization of concrete operational stage class is what we call reversibility. So this is the opposite, of course, of irreversibility under the pre-operational stage. So when we say reversibility class, during the stage of concrete operations, the child can now follow that certain operations can be done in reverse. So, for example, they can already comprehend that the commutative property of addition or addition and that subtraction is the reverse of addition. Then, they can also understand that a ball of clay shaped into a dinosaur can again be rolled back into a ball of clay. So, in reversibility class, children in the concrete operational stage understand that if you reverse the action, like pouring the water back in the same size cups, then the water amount remains the same. It's like magic, but not really because of the concrete operational stage. The next is um, the conservation. So, this is the ability to know the certain properties of objects like number, mass, volume, or area do not change even if there is a change in appearance. So, because of the development of the child's ability of decentering and also reversibility, the concrete operational child can now judge rightly that the amount of water in a taller but narrower container is still the same as when the water was in the shorter but wider glass because they can now perceive the different dimensions or aspects of a certain objects or events. Then, the children progress to attain conservation abilities gradually being a pre-conserver, a transitional thinker, and of course, a conserver. Then, the last characterized Characterization rather of um, concrete operation is what we call seriation. So when we say seriation class, from the word series, this refers to the ability to order or arrange things in a series, chronological, from lesser amount to higher amount. Kabaluna na ani ani nga stage. So based on one dimension such as weight, volume, and size. Okay, so that is the third stage of Piaget stages of cognitive development. And this time, we are down to the last, last nata class, 
nga stage of cognitive development by Jan Piaget and that is what we call formal operational stage. So when we say formal operational stage class, in the final stage of formal operations covering ages between 12 and 15 and up, formal operations thinking becomes more logical than the concrete operational stage. Why? Because in this stage, the children now can solve abstract problems and can hypothesize. Have you observed, class, during these um, years that is 12 up, we are now on our grade 6 and high school. So in these um, years, we are... Um, we are introduced with different um, mathematical operations, problem solving, and of course, experiments. So these are the different um, characterization of formal operational stage. We have what we call hypothetico-deductive reasoning. So we say hypothetico-deductive reasoning class. It is the ability to plan systematic tests to explore multiple variables. Huh? It means scientific reasoning. So under hypothetical reasoning class, it is our ability to come up with different hypotheses. Diba? We as what I've said, we are exposed in our high school years with the different experiments. And of course, in experiments, we are practiced by our teachers to formulate hypotheses diba, in every problem. So, we should come up with different hypotheses about the problem and to gather and weigh data in order to make a final decision or judgment. So, this can be done in the absence of concrete objects because, again, formal operational stage is a stage wherein it is more logical or our thinking becomes more logical. So, the individuals can now deal with what-if questions without the real objects. The next, we have the abstract thought. So we say abstract thought, thought about things that are not real or tangible. So we can think abstractly without touching different objects. So like for example, this painting. What do you think this painting is saying? So from this painting, we can come up to a um, hypothesis or our ideas if what is this painting all about okay then the third one is separating reality from possibility so direction of thinking about reality and possibility reverses reality is thought of as only one of many possible outcomes so how things could be done there are many possibilities and there are many realities in every thing then we have also the combinational logic. So we see combinational logic class, it is about thinking about multiple aspects and combining them logically to solve problems. So that is what combinational logic all about. Then lastly, we have what we call reflective thinking. So it is about thinking about your own thinking on or one of our principles in learner-centered, which is what we call metacognition. You need to regulate your emotions, your thinking, by finding different ways on how to learn by your own. Or you need to be um, active learners in your own, when, uh, wherein you can construct by your own knowledge. Okay? So these are the four stages of cognition by Piaget. So, under the sensory motor class, I have here an example in an illustration. So, the baby said, I want my mommy. So, I'm right here, my sensory motor baby, peekaboo, because most of the babies under sensory motor are basing on their different senses and muscle movement or motor development then for the second stage again which is the pre-operational so um the your mother will ask which container has more liquid so the baby girl will say 
I say A has more because it is taller and because I'm pre-operational. Because this is characterized by what we call what? Ansaman B? What we call the centration. Wherein the BB girl only focuses on one aspect of the thing which is the taller one. Kung kinsay mas dagan. Then the third um, stage is what we call the concrete operational. Uh, si little brother at the age of 12 and up. I don't care. And up 12 up. Um, the concrete operational is 8 to 11. So let's say this little boy is um, 10 years old. So I don't care what the hypothetical rules are. According to my concrete operational mindset, feathers can't break windows. And the last stage, um, the formal that is 12 and up. So if the rules state that the feathers break windows, then feathers break windows. Tada! I'm logical and formal operation. So, to end this um, lesson class, um, as teachers and as parents, we need to have um, e guidelines on how do we apply these different um, stages and principles by Jan J stages of cognitive development. So, as teachers and um, parents, we need to take note that we need to provide different explanations of reality at different stages of cognitive development. Then cognitive development is facilitated by providing activities or situations that engage learners. So we need to make sure class future educators to um, provide activities or situations that engages learners with class and require adaptation. Example of it of this are the different processes under the basic cognitive concepts, which are the assimilation and accommodation. The next, we need to make sure that our learning materials and activities should involve the appropriate level of motor or mental operations for a child of given age. Dili tamu proceed o certain age nga ilahang edad is for under pre-operational then your examples or activities are for students or children under formal operational so did you not pwede class ha then avoid asking students to perform tasks that are beyond their current cognitive capabilities and lastly use teaching methods that actively involve students and present challenges so, I have here a quotation from John Pia J class that the principal goal of education in school should be creating men and women who are capable of doing new things, not simply repeating what other generations have done. So, we need to produce students who are innovators, creative thinkers, and critical thinkers. So, I hope um, you have learned another um, theory in this meeting. And you have learned something, of course, in this lesson. And you can apply these things that we have learned in this lesson in your future teaching. Okay? So, good day. Thank you so much. And good afternoon or good morning.